Hey everyone, I hope you're having a really nice day and welcome back to another new video. And before I move on to today's topic, I just wanted to say a huge thank you because the support that you've shown towards this channel is just tremendous and I'm really thankful for each and every one of you for watching my videos and leaving a like and sharing your thoughts in the comments because it really matters a lot to me and I'm really thankful for that. Moving on to today's video, I just took several pictures of the tomato from different angles so that I can get a variety of pictures to choose from. And as you can see, all the pictures are of high quality and I can zoom in and zoom out to see all the details. So if you are a beginner, then I suggest that you do this. In this image, there are three shadows because of the three light sources that are coming from this side, that is the left side. And the brightest highlights are at the top and the shadows are on the right side and also there are some highlights at the bottom and that is because of the light reflected from the table because light bounces off from the table and falls onto the tomato. And that's why certain regions at the bottom are going to be lighter and they can be considered as highlights. I say all these things to you right now because I just wanted this video to be an absolutely beginner friendly video and that's why I'm sharing all of the behind the scenes tips to you. So the first thing that you need to understand is your reference image. Take a close look at it and determine where the light source is coming from and why certain area is darker and why certain area is lighter and why the shadows are like the shadows that you can see in the reference image. You need to study your reference before you move on to your actual drawing. My reference is right in front of me and using that image, I just drew a basic outline of the tomato. And now I'm going to sketch all the highlights and shadows that I can see in the tomato. And also this particular image that I chose has three shadows. So I have to draw the shape of all the three shadows as well. And I'm going to make a very detailed sketch because if you are a beginner, if you don't know how to add highlights at the end, then it's going to be difficult for you. So it is always better to do a very detailed sketch marking every single detail, every single highlight and shadows so that you don't lose it in the process of coloring. Once I'm done, I'll lighten it up further with a kneadable eraser and that basically just lifts off the excess graphite so that you'll be left with a really nice light sketch. For the color pencils, I'm using Derwent Academy 12 color pencil set and I have a review for that and I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. And this particular set doesn't have white in it so I'm using this uh, black and white set also by Derwent but this is of artist grade quality. I hope you have a color swatch of all the color pencils that you have. If you don't, just go and do it right now because it's going to be really helpful for you to choose all the colors that you want. With the color swatch card that I have with me right now, I'm going to compare this to the reference image and pick out all the color pencils that I need for this particular drawing. Once I have my color pencils, I'm going to sharpen them to a very fine point and I will maintain this fine point for a really long time. So if you want, you can check out this video where I shared with you some more tips about how to improve your color pencil drawing and how to use your color pencils. So feel free to check that video and I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. I chose a lot of colors to draw this tomato because in certain areas there will be a kind of different color like some kind of orangish or brownish or maybe even bluish color. So develop an eye to see all those hidden hues in your reference image. For today's drawing, I'm going to start with highlights and I'm going to use this white pencil and I'm going to draw every single highlight that I can see in the reference image. And it is a pretty interesting technique, which I'll explain right now. When I apply a very thick layer of this white pencil onto the paper, it kind of burnishes it and fills out all the grains in the paper. So the paper on that area will not be able to accept any new color. So that area is going to remain lighter. And this way it will be easier for you to preserve all your highlights. And this is a really good tip if you are a beginner because sometimes if you are just starting out, you don't know what to do if you lost a particular highlight at some particular part of a drawing. 
once i'm done with that i'm going to start with the round thing round shape that is on the top of the tomato because that is the tiniest detail that i can see in the reference so i'm going to do that first and then i'll move on to the tomato since i'm using only 12 color pencil set i have to layer lots of different colors on top of each other to match my reference so if you're doing that what you can do is take a close look at your reference and try to pick out the base color that runs throughout the image and in this case for the round part at the top the base color is actually yellow and in some regions it was kind of greenish uh, kind of color and some bluish color and there were a lot of brown details and some kind of grayish uh, the color was really hard to explain but there were lots of different hues that i could pick out in that particular area so i'm going to use lots of different colors on that particular area to match my reference as you can see the top part on the tomato and the drawing they kind of look similar in terms of color isn't it and that's only because i layered lots of different colors on top of each other so if you are using a limited color pencil set you can just layer lots of colors on top of each other and get the shade that you want Moving on to the tomato, I'm starting with the lightest color and that is the yellow shade. Even though this yellow is not obviously visible, you can definitely see some kind of yellowish tint around the top area. And that's why I'm starting with the yellow first. Because with color pencils, if by any chance you add darker color to any area that you don't want, then there's not much that you can do so it's always better to be on the safer side and start with the lightest color and slowly and gradually move on to the darkest colors now i'm going to move on to the orange color and just keep in mind this is just the first layer this is the base layer and in this base layer what we need to do is establish all the different shades that we can see in the reference image so we are not concerned about details and we are not concerned about saturating the colors all we need is just an establishment of all the different shades that we can see in our reference image and that's it once you're happy with your base layer you can move on to your next layers and just keep in mind to change the direction of your pencil strokes for every new layer don't just keep going on the same direction again and again because what it does is that it's going to make your drawing look patchy and streaky and it's not going to be smooth at all but if you go in the opposite direction to your previous layer or some another direction it is going to fill out the grains of the paper much better and your drawing is going to look much more smoother as you can see with every additional layer the colors are becoming much more saturated and intense and the main thing to note here is that i'm not applying any pressure to the pencil at all i'm very light handed with it Once I've added enough layers of color pencils you can clearly see that the grains are not visible at all and at this stage I can go in with lots of pressure and burnish all the colors together and this way the colors are going to look much more intense and much more saturated Burnishing is actually nothing but applying lots of pressure to your color pencil so that you have a really nice saturated block of color When you burnish the main thing that you need to understand is that The color that you're using to burnish should be lighter than the area that you're going to color. For example, I'll use red to burnish all the areas where I can see the brownish shades in the tomato, and I'll use orange for all the reddish kind of shades, and I'll use yellow for the lightest areas and white for the brightest areas. I hope I'm making sense, and you will figure it out when you're drawing this. And now I'm just going to erase all the areas around the tomato because there will be smudging so I'm just going to clean it up and then I'll move on to the shadows. I'm using a 6B graphite pencil for the shadows and it is always better to use a graphite pencil for shadow because it will be easier for you to blend it out and that way you will have a really nice soft shadow. And now I'm going to use a tissue paper to blend the graphite and in my experience this works the best. Just like we did in our color pencil layer, you need to work in layers for the shadows as well because in that way you're going to get much more richer and much more darker shadow and also a smoother shadow. If by any chance you make a mistake, you can use a needle eraser and fix them. And 
After some finishing touches, you can use a white gel pen for some brightest highlights and that's it, you're done. I really hope that you found this video useful and encouraging. So if you did, then give this video a big thumbs up and as always, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And as I said in the beginning, I'm really thankful for each and every one of your support. It really means a lot to me. So thank you so much for that. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye everybody.